2020 guys welcome i'm roy and i do advanced 3d printing and 3d modeling content this video is going to be all about modeling firmware so if you own a 3d print printer or want to build one then this is a need to know and learn about how to configure modeling for your printer for upgrades or for new installs so let's get started before I go to Mali, I want to talk about subscribers. 70% of you don't subscribe, and I'm gonna have giveaways at 2,000 and at 3,000, and then it's gonna be controller boards and LCD displays. So, more about that in the end of the video, but please subscribe and hit the like button so we can reach those numbers and you will be able to win stuff. First about tools, what you need to install or upgrade Marlin. You need Visual Studio Code. So I'm linking to, the, to this and you just download for your platform and install this guy. Let's have a look. So this is Visual Studio Code. You also need some extension stuff. Just go to extension on the left here and search in extension form IO. You should have platform IO IDE pop up and you just install this guy, which I already did as you can see. So this is how platform IO looks in Visual Studio Code. We need to download Marlin to handle Marlin and GitHub better on your desktop. I advise you to also download the GitHub desktop. So go to GitHub, search for Marlin, find the Marlin 2.0 branch. If you now have installed Visual Studio Code and GitHub Desktop, you will be able to download Marlin here. Since I have GitHub Desktop installed, I can just do open in Desktop. This is how it looks like in GitHub Desktop. There's a choice here in uh, GitHub Desktop to open everything in Visual Studio Code. Before I do that, I want to make a new branch. I don't want to mess with the 2.0 branch. I want to leave that clean. So I'm going to pick this drop down and hit new branch. Just going to call it weekend and name it whatever you want and create branch. So now we have a new branch, all now similar to the 2.0 branch, but we need to make some changes. And I'm going to go through all the parameters you need to change to have a decent setup for your printer. So I'm just gonna hit open in Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna make all the changes there. In the left side of the window, we have uh, the Explorer. The first thing you want to do is to go to platformio.ini and we need to change the default environment to whatever board you are running or the processor you are running. And for me, at the SKR, the big 3 tech SKR 1.3, it's the LPC 1768. So this is stuff you need to find out yourself uh, regarding to your board. So let's just close that. Let's go to configuration H. First of all, for serial port, we need to change that from zero to negative one. That's on line 106. In line 115, we need to change serial port two to, to zero. Line 133, we need to change the board to find my board name, I'm going to go to source and core and boards.h and in line 218 I find my board, so I'm just going to copy that and just paste it. In line 150 I'm going to change that to 175, which is my filament diameter. The next section is the thermal settings, so we need to make sure that we have the right sensors. The temperature sensors enabled so for my printer it is uh, table 5 for the e3d v6 thermistor and uh, which is the we can have a look it's the atc semitech 104 gt many of you have the ntc 3950 and then you can just leave it at one or you can also use table 11 which i'm going to use for my bed sensor I'm going to use 11, you can use 1 or 11. That's on line 408 for the hot end sensor and 414 for the bed sensor. Then the PID section on line 478, you can add your own PID settings if you have them or you can just tune later. 
We need to enable PID temp bed if you have a heated bed. Also here, if you have your numbers for the PID settings on the bed, on line 528, you can add those there. I'm gonna add mine, or else you just do PID tuning as per normal later. At line 560, if you have a Bowden setup, then 500 to 1000 millimeters should be uh, okay. The weaking is a core XY, so I'm gonna own comment line 591. If you have a Cartesian printer, a Prusa style printer, then you don't do nothing here. In the stepper driver section, enable line 664, 665, 666 and 671 and add your driver type at the end. So I'm gonna use TMC 2209s for this setup. So in the movement settings, we need to make sure that line 721 is what we have for our printer and 80 is normal for X, 80 is normal for Y and C, the C number is typically something else than 4000 so for the weaking it's 3200 you need to calculate your own numbers for the C drive also for the extruder as this is a Titan 3 to 1 uh, it's 406 for me you need to figure out your own numbers here, but you can also add those later. Then the maximum feed rate, 300, 300 for X and Y, 5 for the C is fine, but 25 for the extruder, I think it's too low, so I'm gonna set that to 100. That's line 728 for the maximum feed rate. At line 741, we need to set maximum acceleration, so 3000, 3000, 100, 10,000 is fine so i'm gonna leave that at default then we're gonna set the actual acceleration so that's line 756 so i'm gonna set that to 2000 extruder extruder i'm gonna leave at 3000 travel acceleration i'm gonna set to 2000 as well of course if you have a cartesian printer these might be lower so don't use my numbers, but use the numbers that will suit your machine. Now we need to figure out the, our junction deviation. So I'm gonna click the link at line 787. Here you can see a formula. So I'm just gonna calculate. So it's jerk, use 15 squared, and I divide by acceleration printing, which is 2000. And so my number should be 4.045. So I'm just gonna change line 790 to 0.045 at line 801 i'm gonna enable a curve acceleration for smoother turns in the probing section you need to enable your probe for me that is the bl touch at line 873 then we're gonna set the probe offsets in line 930 for the weakening that's 26 on the x it's zero on the y and for C, I'm going to set uh, negative 1.1. The C offset you can also set later, but at least set it to negative something, negative 2 or negative 1, something like that. So in the machine section, I need to make some changes due to I have a core XY, which means X and Y should both run the same way. And I'm going to make it false for X and Y. I need to change the C direction to true. In these lines, 1029, 1030, 1031, you could probably leave that default if you have a partition i3 styled printer, or you need to figure out what way your motor runs. So you can switch those here if you need to. So I also need to change the extruder direction at line 1036. It's not sure that you need to do that, this, so just figure out what way your extruder runs or change this. In line 1061 and 1062, we need to make changes to the, our bed size. So for a weekend, it's 340 on the X, 380 on the Y, 300 on the C, that's line 1070. Line 1086, I want to disable software end stop for C, so we can move in negative C direction to calibrate the right C offset. I'm gonna enable filament runout sensor at line 1109. We are gonna enable auto bed leveling 
for the weakening I use 3 point leveling. For most of you, the default auto build leveling should be bilinear line 1173. I want to add bed leveling on the LCD menu, so that's line 1279, so uncomment that one. Also line 1288, corner leveling for the LCD controller, enable that. If you have a BL touch, very important to enable line 1324, see safe homing. I'm gonna up my homing speeds a little bit. For the XY, I want at least 60 by 60. For the C, 4 by 60 is fine. In line 410, enable apron settings. I'm gonna change the preheat constants from uh, ABS to PET G. I'm gonna do 240 for the nozzle is fine. For the bed, I want like 90. That's line 1450. I also want to up my temperature for the PLA preheat to from 180 to 200. That's line 1446. So at line 1466, I want to enable nozzle parking for filament change. At line 1569, I'm gonna enable print counter. So later we can see how long our board has been running. At line 1627, enable SD support, which is printing from SD card. For encoder settings at line 1656, you might need to change some of these values, especially line 1684 or 1692. It depends on which way your knob uh, turns the display. I'm gonna leave that default for now. So in the LCD controller section, you need to uh, enable the LCD controller which you are running. So we need to figure that out and find the right line. So for me, it's gonna be the RepRap full discount controller. That's line 1878. So I'm gonna enable that one, which also works for the Big 3 Tech TFT24. So that's everything for config H, but we also need to make some changes to the advanced section. So in the explorer, you will also find configuration advanced.h. So just open that one. We can close our configuration file, save it. It's a lot of settings there that you might need to change, which I'm not gonna do. I don't have a heated chamber, so I'm not gonna worry about that one. If you have a dedicated controller fan, then uh, in the line 24, you can make changes to that section. In the extruder section, you can make changes so that your uh, extruder fan turns on only when heated. It's nice to not have this fan running all the time when the printer is on. So at line 402, I'm gonna change the auto fan pin from negative one to fan one underscore pin, which is what we use for the SKR 1.3 board. If you have another motherboard, then you need to figure out what pin this should be. Typically, it's seven for many of you. At line 572, uh, I like to disable uh, bump. Normally, you would like to have some bump. For me, I'm gonna change it to zero. Um, I advise to just leave it default for most of you, which means that you will have a second homing First you will home one time and then you will home a second time slower so we have a more precise homing. It depends on your system. I'm going to leave the C bump at 2. At the baby stepping section we need to make some changes. So that's line 1369. So I'm going to enable baby stepping which means we can uh, move our uh, C offset while uh, starting the print gonna enable double click for baby stepping that's line 1377 I also want to change line 1374 from 1 to like 25 that's the multiplicator for the C baby stepping I want to enable line 1390 we will have the total baby stepping offset on the display so at line 1393 I want to enable the Babyset CPROB GFX overlay. On the LCD screen, it gives you a graphical interface watching the nozzle go up or down. I want to 
enable linear advance, but I want to set the K value to zero. And I want to add my K value in the start code. Or if you set it to zero, then the linear advance is off, which also is nice to be able to run without it. At line 1725, I want to enable advanced pause feature. That's also for the filament uh, change uh, feature utilizing M600. In the stepper section, you can change parameters for your stepper drivers. Most of you should use the default settings here. You can change those later as well from the LCD controller if you have UART option for the Tronamic drivers. So for the Tronamic drivers, that was line 1877 and down. Then I want to disable Stealth Shop on uh, C and E. So line 2048 and 2049, I want to comment out. To optimize spread cycle chopper parameters, I'm going to change the default 12 volt to 24 volt. That's line 2065. So change that to uh, your system settings. We want to enable debugging on the TMC drivers. So we can utilize M122. So enable line 2162. And that should be everything for the configuration advanced page. And now we are ready to start compiling. So to compile then on the left panel, then click platform IO. Open project tasks, find your environment. For me, it's the LPC 1768. So expand the, your environment and click build. Hopefully we will have success. In the terminal section, we can see that we have success on the LPC 1768 at 57 seconds. Now I want to upload this to a SD card. So I have a SD card here. So I'm just gonna put that in my computer. Then I'm gonna hit upload and it should find the SD card automatically. So just hit upload and we have success also uploading at 5.6 seconds. So now just take the SD card, put it in the motherboard, add some power to it and it should boot up with Marlin 2.0.1. So that's everything you need to know to configure Marlin. So I hope you understand. Some of you might have other parameters than me, but this, this will give you an insight to what you need to think about when configuring a new firmware for your 3D printer. And also for the giveaways, guys, 70% of you watching do not subscribe. So if you just hit the subscribe button and also if you like the content, please like. For 3,000 subscribers, there's going to be three prizes. It's going to be an SKR 1.1. Third prize is going to be the mini panel from Fistec, the 12864 Fistec LCD controller. So I hope you join the family by subscribing and be able to win those prizes. That's all for now. Have a great 2020. Now go melt some plastic.